For those with Denali dreams, preparation cannot be taken lightly. So how did two guys from Nome with no big mountains in their backyard prepare to summit Denali? Well, joining us now, Oliver and Wilson Hogendorn, the first to summit Denali this year. Uh, gentlemen, such an honor to have you here. How are we doing this summer? Thank you. Pretty good. It's a pretty good summer so far. I yeah. would say so. You kicked it <laughs> off right. Uh, just what, a couple days out of high school um, or, or out of school, right? Oh, yeah. We, yeah. And then we just got right up it. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> right after school, we drove out there. Seemed like the right it. time, yeah. All right, I, see, I said high school. So tell the folks at home, uh, Wilson, how old are you? I'm 20. 20 years old. Yep. I just turned 22 in July. Just turned 22, Oliver. So 20, uh, so 22 in July, so you were 21 when you summited here, mm -hmm. uh, 20 years old. It's pretty incredible. How did you guys get into this, especially coming from Nome, flat land, right? Um, we had a cross-country coach in, growing up in high school, and his name was Jeff Collins. And he uh, invited us on this run outside of Nome. And we were kind of in the mountains and um, thinking about what it might be like in the wintertime. Yeah. And so we got into skiing and eventually made it back into the mountains during the wintertime. And <laughs> it kind of went from there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what do you think, Wilson? Now, was it a quick, you, you just get out there once and you fell in love with it and you always want to be on a mountain, hiking, doing something like that? Pretty much. Yeah? <laughs> if it's steep, I love it. It's, if it's steep. Yep. And, and uh, tell the folks how you train, because you don't train, uh, you train for Denali in kind of a different way. I think it's mostly just like being in cold weather and yeah. suffering in cold weather. That's the biggest part. I was going to ask you if it was cold. So, <laughs> a spoiler, it is cold it's uh, a little up bit at cold. the summit. It's a little yeah. bit cold. No, but you do something that a lot of folks do um, at home, in the gym. Uh, you used uh, oh, the a stair stepper, stair yeah, stepper yeah. to prepare, I, I right? I put heavy things in my backpack and walked on the stair stepper. <laughs> I'd usually watch, uh, I'd put like a, my phone up on the, the dash and just keep stepping. <laughs> keep stepping. Yeah. What are you thinking about when you're stepping? You're just thinking about that summit? I was thinking about that heavy sled that we had to carry. That sled's so heavy, dude. So heavy. Are we like 120 pounds? 120 pounds, <laughs> yeah, something like that. And that's the sled. That's everything you need to yep. be successful. To right, pretty much. Yeah, I think we and had enough for like a month. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's start talking about the prep. So it started cross country running. Uh, you just you got a little taste of the outdoors, a little mm -hmm. bit of taste for adventure, and then you said we're going to summit the Nally someday. <laughs> when, when was that first conversation when you said? Well, let's take on the largest mountain in North America. I was scrolling through Instagram one day, and I followed this pro skier, Cody Townsend. And it was a picture of him skiing off the summit of Denali, and I, was, I sent it to Oliver. Yeah. I was like, we could do that. <laughs> and I, I kind of laughed at first, but he started to do more research and tell me more about it. And eventually it was like, yeah, okay, yeah, we can like, do dude, this. It's only like two grand. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that is another thing I think that will shock a lot of folks. You, you put this trip together, $2,000. Some people, 15 grand at, at the mm -hmm. minimum to mm -hmm. do something like this. How did you do it on the cheap? Uh, we didn't have enough money uh, to have a guide, so we just did it by ourselves. It was like yeah. Denali on a budget. So what? that was the big chunk of it. What? And then from backcountry skiing, we already had a lot of like the avalanche gear that you might need. So the main things we had to buy were like a, a sleeping bag and a tent. Those were the two big purchases. This was like a thousand dollar tent. Okay. Yeah. Nine hundred dollar sleeping bag. <laughs> oh, we're gonna find out why they invested that money in uh, in the tent and the sleeping bag here in just a few minutes. But when so from the initial conversation, you see a guy skiing up there, say, "Man, this is pretty cool." I'm gonna tell my brother, and he laughs, but he's like, "We might be able to do this. Let's get about two grand together." Mm -hmm. We. How are you doing this without a guide? Oh, our first year we did it with another guy who had already gone up or almost made it to the summit, so he already had some experience on the mountain. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess that's the other thing we should tell folks. This was not your first time summiting Denali. Uh, how old were you when you first summited? Oh, uh, we tried to summit the year before this last spring. Yeah. But we only made it to about 16,000 feet. Oh, so you did not summit the no. first time that you attempted no. Denali. Yeah, so this last time going up, it was kind of... We knew, we felt like we knew what we were doing, but then we got to that point where we hadn't been past, and it was like, whoa, yeah. <laughs> now we're in it. Yeah, we're, By we're here. Yeah, well, talk about uh, what you're thinking as you're flying out. Now, you're flying out to base camp in this video here. This is a video you gentlemen took. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is, uh, this is landing at base camp. This is where uh, you start to walk. <laughs> I was like, how many people are gonna be there? Because the year before, there were a lot of people, that, but then we rolled up right here. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> There's like nobody here. Yeah. 
I remember my stomach kind of sunk a little bit. I was like, like oh no, what are we going to follow? What yeah. trailer are we going to follow? <laughs> and what day was that? So that was because you guys were the first ones, mm -hmm. uh, like literally the first ones to touch down there and, uh, and get it on. I was Cinco de Mayo. Yeah. Cinco de Fifth May. of May. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> and, but it was weird because we weren't the first ones to, to touch down there. There was lots of people that tried to go up before yeah. us. Wait, okay. What, mm -hmm. What's that? You, there was somebody had already uh, had attempted it? Mm hmm Lots yeah, of people. Yeah, there were people trying mm -hmm. all before, but they said it was too cold, I guess. Too cold, too windy. And they were so like, they, they it's were negative back. 50 up there. And then we got up there, and it was like negative 20. <laughs> now, when you hear that, though, when you're, when you're crossing ways and people are like, mm -hmm. this is brutal, this is bad, guys, <laughs> and you're thinking, oh, we better, we better not. We already, one time, this didn't work out. We should probably turn around. Is that thought you crossed Everyone your mind? Everyone wanted to turn nope. around. Nope. Beautiful. It was, we were always always going for it. I told him last night, I was like, dude, you can't just quit on the mountain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Did you motivate each other, I imagine, sometimes? Because yeah. it had to be tough. Definitely, yeah. Like, when, when Wilson was feeling down, I would, I would motivate him, and, you know, it would go back and forth. So when I was feeling down, he would motivate me. Yeah. So we kind of built off each other, and it, it worked well, I thought. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's, uh, yeah, let's talk about, uh, there's uh, some video of you guys trying to eat up here in Denali. <laughs> let's, let's take a look at this. Which one is it? Yeah, getting pretty skinny up here on Denali. Getting a little bit of buns on my face. Some long hair. My thumb. My thumb's got up. <laughs> I, I, or for so many things right there. First of all, uh, we built the city. You got a little Jefferson Starship mm -hmm. uh, playing mm -hmm. up there on the mountain. The radio, you had a good signal, you said, so you, at least you had some tunes. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's this little radio out in front of us, right actually. Of, we, we put right a little there. aux cord yeah. in the top. Yeah, I hear that. And then uh, we'd tie the top of the aux cord to the, the roof of our tent. And it would, uh, we got 25 stations. 20, FM. Yeah. 25 FM. 25 and from FM. how many? You said there were stations from all over, too. McGrath, Fairbanks, <laughs> Anchorage, yeah. <laughs> Very cool. I, you had to have some entertainment up there, I imagine. That helped mm -hmm. a lot. We, we crank it a thousand times before we went to bed. Yeah. <laughs> now, the other Open thing. It up. Yeah. Crank it a thousand times, <laughs> and then it would run for like three hours and we'd fall asleep to the radio. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, and then you, 19 pounds, did you say you guys had lost at this point? Uh, you were showing off your stomach there. That's because you, you were seeing bones. That was a little bit skinny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, do you, so how do you have the energy? If you're, and why are you, why did you lose 19 pounds? Mm, I think it was just because you kind of don't get that hungry up there. Yeah, okay. Because you're at elevation, you lose your appetite, kind of. Don't want to eat, you don't want to drink. You have to force yourself to eat. Mm -hmm. But it makes you feel a lot better. You gotta mm -hmm. get those nutrients. Mm -hmm. Yeah, All right. eat and sleep. Well, here's another video kind of showing, I, I think, some of, uh, of the trials and tribulations that you guys faced as you were ascending. Oh. Yeah, what's going on here? Tell us where you're at. Um, we're headed up to 17,000 camp. Yeah. This is on the ridge. This is the hardest day for me. This is where we had never been the previous year. Mm -hmm. And it was like a little bit worse than what we had expected. Way, way worse for we me. We thought it would be like, we thought 17 camp would be a lot sooner than it was. And mm -hmm. it took us 10 hours to hike that because we were breaking trail. Yeah. And it took normal, normal people like four hours. And how long did it take? 10, 10 hours. 10 we started hours. at 1 a.m. Mm -hmm. So you were wondering, are we going the right way at some point, or where are we? A couple was, times, yeah. It was, yeah, it was like we'd never been here before. Do we actually know what we're doing? <laughs> that mm. is scary. That is scary, because you are alone on Denali, at least 17,000 feet right there, you mm. said? Is that, that was probably 16.5. 16.5, mm -hmm. yeah. almost to 17. Mm -hmm. um, you have a compass, you have a map. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know, what are you guys doing to navigate? Mm. There's uh, these little wands, these bamboo wands, they're painted green, uh -huh. and you can kind of see some remnants from the previous year. Okay. Yeah. okay. Sometimes they're broken, though. Sometimes that, I imagine they are, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> just a victim of the elements. And that part of the trail, too, there is a picket set up, so you could clip your rope in if uh, it's kind of protection from falling. Okay. We'll talk about, where, where are we here? Oh, this is called the edge of the world. It's kind of like a tourist spot because there's such a big drop off. It's around right around 14,000 camp. Mm -hmm. So this is, that's like a 7,000 foot drop or something. So, and it's cool because you can see where you came from. <laughs> you can see all the little other tents set up and mm -hmm. a really bleak trail coming up the glacier. Top of the world almost. And, you, almost. and plus, you know you're making gains, right? Yep. It's got to feel good that as you're working good. your way up. Gains every day. Gains every day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right, so you're forcing yourself to eat. 
you're forcing yourself to drink water. Um, how's the sleep? Are you getting good sleep out there? Yeah, it was hard sleeping a couple times, mm -hmm. especially at 17,000. Yeah. Bad, because you get up there and your ears are ringing and you just feel out of it, because there's no oxygen. Okay. Yeah, it seems like the, the more you go up, the, the harder it is to sleep. Like by the time we got to 17,000, it was more just rolling around with your eyes closed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, let's, uh, here, let's take a look at one of the videos you guys uh, filmed from up there. We just hiked up to 17 from 14. It took us 10 hours. We started at 1 a.m. We thought, why not? We're awake. It took us like five hours to get up the head wall and then another five hours to get past all the squiggly rocks and stuff. Wow, so how much sleep were you operating on right there? Nothing. Nothing. In the Nothing. previous days. <laughs> yeah. That's incredible, because at 1 a.m. you started. You ended up going, it took a lot longer to get to 17 than you had thought. Mm -hmm. And you got to be exhausted. And then you know, how, how far do you have to go at this point? Well, it was, was 3,000 more feet, a couple miles. A couple more miles. miles yeah. And then a couple miles. We didn't know that beforehand. It was funny. We knew the elevation game we had to go, but the, where the summit exactly was, it was kind of up in the air. Okay. So we thought we could see it, and then we got there, and it was like the summit was still way up Ooh. there. Yeah. I was like, we're almost there, man. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got up to right past 18, and I see a taller little hump out in the distance, probably a mile away. I was like, oh, no, because I already had frozen water in my backpack. Yep. No food left. That is a great place to take a break, okay? okay. That is what we call a tease here, gentlemen, <laughs> in the business. We have Wilson and Oliver Hogendorn. Thank you very much for being here. When we come back, we'll talk about that ascent all the way to the top. All right, we are back with Oliver and Wilson Hogendorn, the first climbers to summit Denali this year. And gentlemen, we talked about, uh, about that false sense of hope as you get closer and closer and you see what you think might be the peak and you think we're there, we're, we're within reach, and it turns out, no. <laughs> no. Not even close. Not even close. Mountain mm -hmm. said psych. <laughs> no, do, do, do you, you have to get these feelings like, are we going to make it at any point? Did you have any feelings of doubt? As you're, wow. as you're getting closer. Mm -hmm. So many times. Oliver was mostly the one that wanted to keep pushing because a couple of times I was like, just turn around. <laughs> yeah. But the, there's a section just above 17 camp called the Autobahn. And that's where a lot of people die. I think like they say 22 people have died there. Wow. And so once we got past that, above all the crevasses and we could kind of see the football fields going up to the summit, mm -hmm. That's when I started to get more, feel more reassured mm -hmm. about ourselves. We got more sense of distance versus mm -hmm. like elevation. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And it wasn't as cold as we thought it would be. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so what did it feel like there as you're getting above 17? And you see the, I like how you described that, a football fields. Mm -hmm. Because right at 17 camp, you can see the Autobahn and you could see the old trail from last year. Barely. <laughs> Barely. So you're looking at it for the whole time you're at 17. So and then we started yeah. climbing it and it felt way bigger. Yeah. And at one point during that, I'd take my boots off and I stuck them in Oliver's belly because my feet were getting too cold. Because it was like 5 a.m. Sure. in the morning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like the coldest time of the night. Well, we were talking about how you keep your food thawed, uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, how you, the water, things like that. I was telling, the old football trick, you shove your hands in, in your pants if it gets cold mm -hmm. out. And is, that, is that what you're doing under the armpit, uh, in the pants? All the time. Anything man, you can do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's like any warm spot you can think of, it's like, all right. Got to keep your extremities warm. Because once you feel your uh, feet and hands start to go, like, it takes a toll on your mind, too. I'm, yeah. Because yeah. what are tools? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, what am like, I going to do? Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And then, it, of course, it's mental. Well, let's take a look at dinner. Let's see what dinner looked like okay. for you boys. Celebrating mm, at 11. Al dente. <laughs> 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 now, what was it? Was that ramen there? That is top that? ramen. Top Hot ramen. The top. best decision we ever made. <laughs> Salty goodness. Salty goodness. Because in those mountain houses, they don't put any salt. And so that's all you want afterwards. It's like, mm -hmm. I need some, like, salty fats in my body. Mm -hmm. Was it tough to get that fire started uh, for the propane tank? Mm -hmm. or not tough to keep easy. it lit, I guess, no? Yeah, it was pretty easy. It okay. Was, yeah. If it was windy and snowy out, it was, uh, was kind of tough trying to keep the pump that little plastic pump ice free because we only brought one stove. One stove, dude. One stove. Or one of those that could boil water. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was like, Oliver, don't break that <laughs> stove. Because if you break the stove, it's over. He's always on me about the stove. You keep it snow free. <laughs> yeah, don't get snow on that. <laughs> well, a lot of this is preparation. I think I think we have a, a clip here of you guys inside the tent. Monday the 6th. No? Yeah, Monday the 6th. 
supposed to be like this Tuesday and Wednesday. Oh, 9,000 ad right there, yeah. Yeah, and um, now, how many days were you in that? Now, look at this. What What are you guys I mean, thinking right that here? That was bad. <laughs> Holy cow, even. that's and, the worst storm I've ever been in. Mm -hmm. And that where was, are you? That was uh, 9,300 feet on the yep. Kahiltna Glacier. We got buried. Mm -hmm. It's kind it was, of a little bit scary. Mm -hmm. uh, this, to me, would be one of the scarier moments when you're mm -hmm. hunkered down for four days in conditions like this. Uh, every so often, you got to go out of the tent. And th by the way, folks, this is why you pay a thousand dollars for a tent, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. it, it's legitimate. Um, and then, okay, <laughs> and then you get out. You have to dig yourself out every few hours. Just... And then you go back in and warm up in the tent. Then you get soaked, and then you have to go back out again when you're soaked and dig it out some more. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And so if the sun's not out, you just everything's getting wet, and you yeah, yeah. It's, it's bad. <laughs> I think we got some more video from that experience there. Been in this little space for about four days, but now you can see again. You can see for long ways. Four days later. Four days later. Stuck in the tent. You're getting used to that? Uh-huh, and these two people, I think they were from Sweden, they stopped by and they said, hello, hello. <laughs> yeah, they are trying to get our attention. And so, yeah, we unzipped our tent. <laughs> like two heads <laughs> popped out of here. Did you hear that? Yeah, it's like other, other people, people. Other people's voices. And they said, move, move, it's yeah. sunny out. Yeah, and so we, we packed up our stuff and went. <laughs> you didn't even know how beautiful it was no, out it was, there. Well, there you go. Crazy, yeah. And do you lose track of time? Like, you knew it was four days. Yeah. How, what are you guys doing? How are you keeping track? I mean, well, you have watches and things, yeah, I imagine. But one day it felt like it was only four hours long, and then another felt like it was two days. Sure. Because it was just we were trying to sleep as much as we could just to pass time. Right, <laughs> right. Sleep, you, sleep and radio. Sleep that and was, radio. That was the trick, yeah. And then I, I asked you guys uh, if you had any chance to watch, watch a movie. I know you had your phones, and you were able to oh, film some yeah. things. So how did you charge your, your phones? Oh, we had like a fold-out solar panel charger. You just fold it out in the sun. But if it was cloudy, it didn't work that well. There you mm -hmm. go. So you had to pick your spots to charge things up. And mm -hmm. when it was sunny out. You know. <laughs> see, see, and so much planning goes into these type things, but then you, you got to be able to, uh, to change plans. Got to cope. Like that, yep. right? The weather always says no way. Very cool. Well, uh, but you overcame that four days and that, that storm, which thank you for sharing these videos. It's, it's mm. incredible. Uh, let's, let's see. We're, we're ascending. We're getting a little closer. Um, talk about as you, as you approach the, the summit. What kind of what what those feelings are? How you are not only physically but emotionally and mentally feeling? Physically, we ran out of water because it froze in our backpack. Really? Yeah. What? In like the first three hours, and it mm -hmm. took us like 19 hours of that day or something. Is really your summoning? Long. Yeah. Wow. And all we had was like these little bars. So we were really kind of tired. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, the elevation—it's kind of hard to explain, but. For me, it felt like my brain was almost like inside of an eggshell, and I was trying to think using this weird, like, uh, hindered brain. <laughs> Transcentral, trying to make decisions and find a trail. So hindered, yeah. Yeah, without being able to think very well. Yeah. That was probably the hardest part for me. And well, then you can't breathe, you know? It's just all these elements. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I was going to say, you can't really rely on instinct because it's not like you do this every day. <laughs> yeah. you know? Animals don't go up there. <laughs> yeah, <man. laughs> yeah. so, uh, so what do you... I mean, uh, how much sleep did you get the night before? You said it took you, what, 19 hours to, to summit? Well, because we had been at 17 camp for a day and a half already. Yeah. And that second day, we could see it start to clear up. We could see blue sky. So I said, okay, let's try in the morning. But before we went to sleep, it got really clear out. Mm -hmm. And Wilson mm -hmm. really wanted to sleep, but I was on edge. And so I think I slept maybe half an hour that night. Cause I Poor Oliver. I just kept looking outside the tent. I was, oh. We were uh, looking weather on our inReach, yeah. but it was, it was exciting. I couldn't, couldn't handle it. <laughs> it's hard to climb mountains, man. I, mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, I'll take it's your hard. word for it. I will, I will take your word for it. Um, so I, before we get to the summit, I know you wanted to show us a little bit of a, of a helicopter rescue that you guys had oh, had seen. Yeah. Um, could you tell us kind of where this is and, and explain what's happening here? This was on uh, Windy Corner, and it was really icy because it was so early in the season. And I guess there was a guy trying to snowboard around it. Huh. And people <laughs> usually just walk it early in the season. And I guess he caught an edge and slid down. And right there, there's some uh, crevasses. He yeah. fell into one, oh, and he no. broke like four ribs. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't get any helicopters up there for a couple of days, so we had to lay down there for, I think, wow. four days or so. No kidding. And how did he survive? I mean, he, 
he happened to land on this little ledge, I mm -hmm. guess, and he, they were able to set up a tent. Yeah, the rangers went and helped him out mm -hmm. and gave him painkillers and stuff. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I, it, thought, I felt lucky that day. This is incredible what yeah. you guys do and what, what, what these folks, these adventurers. I mean, mm -hmm. it is so dangerous, and you don't even worry about that. You know why? Because you see stuff like, like this. Mm -hmm. We got this wonderful video. Look at that. That's got a... It, yeah, it really helped growing up in the home. Yeah. That was, I, that was probably our biggest um, plus. <laughs> and where were, Yeah, I was going to say, where is this right here? Is this... This is at 14 Camp. This, this is 14 is, Camp. Uh, okay. Like, uh, usually this whole area, like when we got back down from the summit, there was like maybe uh, 150 people here. Yeah, at least. But when we were here, it was just us and the That range of tent in the distance right mm -hmm. there. So that was... That was also shocking because we were we were excited to get to 14 because mm -hmm. it was like oh yeah. there's gonna meet up with some homies gonna be a party up there yeah. Yeah. 14 kids. well excited to 14 how about right here oh how about this <laughs> talk about this best feeling that's the top earth. Yep. everything is, is downhill mm. in the whole the continent. whole continent yeah wow you are the you are a person that is on ground taller than any other person mm -hmm. in North America mm -hmm. at that moment. Jump. I, <laughs> I mean, well, seriously though, when you get up there, is there just, do you guys take a few minutes or, is, I mean, are you, are you hugging each other, are you taking pictures or is it like, man, I just need a minute to think or what, what happens at the top? We sat there for maybe 15 minutes just kind of awestruck that we actually yeah. did it. We didn't take very many pictures, didn't talk much. It was All more was kind of freaking out. <laughs> Because in the next valley over, there was like these 30,000-foot clouds. He's like, let's get off this mountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, well, you ski down. Mm -hmm. Ski down. Wilson brought his fat skis to the top. Would you say that was the, uh, the best skiing adventure? The adventure, yeah. Not the best skiing. <laughs> Not the best skiing. skiing. It's probably the worst skiing. Because <laughs> that was too cold to slide on. Yeah. Grippy Not, skis. No powder. Mm -hmm. No. No. <laughs> no. Well, that's incredible. Uh, when you're up at the top and you're thinking, man, we tried this, it didn't work, and we, we came back and we did it. Uh, that has to be just the best feeling, redemption. Mm -hmm. I get to finish the job. That's, that's, yeah, I think that's why we did it. That's, yeah. Like, the more I look back at it, I think that's why I did it, yeah. just to finish, we what, did we, it. finish <laughs> what we started and uh, really put a cap on that, you know, because it had been on my mind for, what, two years by then. And it was just egging at me, like in classes, in the back of my head, like, oh, you didn't do it, you didn't do it. Wow. <laughs> and so, and it, it was really tough to come back from that first trip and tell people, oh, we didn't summit. Mm -hmm. But when we went up, just me and Wilson, and to come back and say, yeah, we summited, oh, can't beat it. He's going back to school. He's going to go tell everyone. Yeah, was, guess yeah, what? This time. <laughs> That's <a> mean. <laughs> and you go to school in Colorado. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing like that in Colorado. No. People are going to be very impressed. <laughs> very nice. Uh, Oliver Wilson, you guys are fantastic. Congratulations. Not only their first summit, but they were the first to summit this year. That had to feel good. Mm -hmm. Go Nuke Bex. Oh, yeah. Nuke Bex. <laughs> very nice. And uh, I'm sure you got a lot of adventures down the road. We'll, we'll cook something we'll up. Cook something yeah. up. <laughs> All right, we'll be in touch. Thank you very much, Thanks, gentlemen. John. Thank you.